And we're back with another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford, come right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, where we cover the latest news and trends in pop culture each and every week, twice a week, every Monday and every Friday for you, wherever you get your podcasts. Plus as well, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, Game Source, where you can find the latest news and trends in the video game world right there on Game Source at Facebook. Plus, our good friends at LakersBall.com during the season, of course, because the Lakers are not playing right now, but they should be, but they aren't. But when they do, the LakersBall.com site right there with Ox1947 right there. Be there for their live game time, game time chat. And as he's saying, you know, doing the John Cena thing right there for you, you got to go ahead and check out the comments he's saying throughout the summer at LakersBall.com and the great groups that they have there. And, of course, the great articles that Laker Tom and Jamie Sweet are still dropping each and every week at LakerHolics.com. Be part of the conversation today when they drop new articles right there for you at, of course, LakerHolics.com. Plus, our good friends the Hoop Heads Podcast Network, of course, still putting out content, great NBA podcasts, plus also as well sharing our thoughts as well from the NBA scene. Please go ahead and give them some love, and you can go ahead and give all these. And if you do, some love is much appreciated. And big shout-out to YouTube. We're now at 150 subscribers strong. Like that number, we've gone, wow, we've gone, I think, since the beginning of the year, and I almost doubled in size there. So props to you guys. I know the comment boards, We just I just replied to as many as I could. I know Joe's going to keep an eye on it, too, so we truly appreciate it. But as always, we thank you for being part of the Lakers Fast Break podcast. Well, I mean, this, we're still fishing. We're still going, looking, searching for the Lakers in Cancun or somewhere, wherever they're vacationing. The NBA playoffs are still continuing. We'll give you an update on that later. But there's always something interesting going on in Lakerland. A certain coach might be retiring, which caught the eye of one of our panelists for today's show so yes he's going to be talking about that plus also as well we'd be talking if the lakers should buy into this year's nba draft or maybe trade i mean there's been a whole bunch of rumors out there hoop hype hoops hype i should say gave them a, a kind of like a rumor thing that they've got thrown out there that they threw out on twitter so we'll maybe talk about how they can still get their way into this year's draft or maybe what they're doing to work on some trades during the summer as well. But first, guys, the big news concerning Lakers, it's about the show that we talk about on a weekly basis right here, the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's HBO's winning time, which is so funny that we all were on the same page on episode one, but by episode seven, we're like, far apart <laughs> and it's also so funny because whoever you talk to they either love it or they hate it if you're a la old laker that is being represented on screen in this winning time series and whatnot on hbo and hbo max you're not loving what you're seeing you're really having a hard time about it in fact we've got some things we're going to tell you about some updates on that end but if you're the critics out there and in fact, early indications for the Emmys, if you take a look at Variety.com, they have winning time among the leaders of the pack and among the favorites to possibly get an Emmy nomination, including John C. Riley playing Jerry Buss. And the show is in a, it's one of the top 10 favorites that could sneak in for the best drama that's out there. So guys, I'm going to bring in one right now, Laker Tom. He is the madman behind Lakerholics.com. It is winning time. I know you actually enjoyed the previous episode, episode seven. It, since that episode aired, it has garnered a lot of controversy. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has said some not so very nice things about it. Jerry stick West. Figures. Yeah, stick figures, I think, was the thing that stuck out. You're correct. Jerry West has lawyered up because he <laughs> is demanding that there should be a retraction by HBO. I did get to see a earlier interview that was taped right after the first episode with Paul Westhead. So he was, he, I know he's watching because he said he was going to be very curious to see how it's going to develop, how Jason Siegel will play his character. So 
I bet if you interviewed him now, he would not be too happy <laughs> about it. So I want to hear your thoughts on what's going on. It gets into satire. It gets into legalities as far as, uh, you know, dramatization. I know they put the disclaimer out there that they changed some things around for dramatical purposes and entertainment purposes. I'm having a hard time now as far as when, you know, the stuff that they change. As Joe said, this latest episode was the most fictional of all these episodes because of how much they changed. You're still enjoying it to the max, my friend. Variety has still got this as a show that's one of the Emmy favorites going into nominations here. I think in June, I think it's it's uh, June or July is when they actually announce them. But your thoughts on the certain this latest controversy with HBO's winning time? To me, it's simply a question of whether this is a documentary or entertainment. And uh, generally, uh, I would have to admit that my- Oh, this jumped the shark on documentary a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, well, it's uh, the problem is, is that documentaries are pretty dry and generally you're not gonna see uh, them get the kind of action that they're getting with this particular show. Um, and so the entertainment aspects of it, I think are terrific. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because I'm not bothered by, uh, first off, I, I really admire Jerry West and I admire Jerry Buss. I admire Paul Westhead. I thought, you know, he, I, I followed him at Loyola Marymount, same as you did, Gerald. And I love his style of play and so forth. Most fun um, college what, basketball what, what team sticks out to me, what sticks out to me is that I know that I can see why the particular people involved would be upset at this point at the show because they have taken, let's say, certain characteristics of each of the of the each of the main protagonists in the story, and they've they've exaggerated them to the extent that it's entertaining. Um, Jerry West, you know, is as the OCD uh, guy who can't even coach a team because he can't be on the floor while the team is playing, you know, and he can't be the general manager. He has to go down into the dressing room to listen to the games on the radio as Chick calls him because he can't handle the pressure. And the scenes that you saw just sort of showed that, but they also showed that West was a really smart basketball guy, a, a guy who understood the thing, who really held the Lakers together during that period of time. You see the same thing with Jerry Buss with his, predilection for the 60s type of you know Hugh Hefner style of, of lifestyle and yet he built he built the LA Lakers you know and he built Showtime and I, I see the same thing happening with uh, with uh, Riley in and in, in the depiction that, that, that we're seeing of him where it starts off as a guy who's not even sure he can be a, a, a radio announcer doesn't know what he's wanted us to do um, and then all of a sudden gets into the coaching bug and ends up becoming one of the greatest coaches that that's ever coached the Lakers. Um, and we'll see that as we go on and we see the success of Showtime and, and the things turn out. And, and I think that there'll be a more balanced appreciation for the characters at the end, but definitely all of us, you know, none of us like to see our own personal foibles hoisted around and, and roasted, you know, um, Especially when, when you know, it's it's being done for the almighty dollar and the entertainment value of, of the show. Um, ironically, as I'm sure you understand, Gerald, because we've talked about this, that all of this attention is only going to make the show even more popular. Well, it's already, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Plus, it's already been... Uh, now people are going to want to watch it and see what is this whole deal going on with Jerry West. You know, what's this whole deal with the depiction of Kareem? Well, HBO's you know, and, loving it. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, hey, I love the show. You know, it's uh, it, without those things in it, it could be kind of boring because you have to feel it. First off, we're watching it because I grew up in watching those games. You know, those are the games that I can remember where I was on all of those championship games and everything. And so for me, it's reliving that whole thing. So I know most of the story, although I've even forgotten parts of it because it's been so long ago, you know. Um, but it's, you know, it, it, the show is fun, you know, and it's fun to relive it. And, and you know, I think the best part of the even all of the various things that I in the show that I loved, the whole thing about F Boston was it was the best part of the show for me. Um, and I, although I was rooting for the Celtics tonight, I have to admit that. 
Um, well, all of a sudden, though, I did think in the game, I, I flashed in me in the game that the Celtics might win their 18th this year. Yes, why? That's why I'm not rooting Yeah, for I know, I know. I thought about that. I thought, hey, wait a minute. Am I cutting my throat here? What if the Celtics surprised everybody and won their 18th championship? We'd be one behind those leprechauns again. Um, anyway, I'm I'm all thumbs up for winning time. That's for you, my friend. I understand. But what if they made a show about the Lakers fast break and they play, you know, had someone playing Laker Tom? And mm -hmm. I could if it wasn't a good representation of Laker Tom, you know, you know what I mean? Oh, I, I just, have I have friends who constantly do that right for me. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. My wife also, does it every single day. Well, there you go. There you go, Dave. You know, but also, you gotta, you've got to know your place and understand it. I mean, and of course, if I was Jerry West, I'd probably really be offended by that, you know? I mean, um, although I think Jerry comes, yeah, I think it's Jerry comes off funny, you know? I don't I don't dislike the Jerry West that I'm seeing on the screen. Those early episodes on Jerry make him look like a goof. Well, but, you know, there's the elements of a truth. Ball you know, the whole thing about this is that what makes these things work in the show, even for people who know Jerry West, is that that trace of belief that you see in there, that trace of truth that you see, even though it's exaggerated, there's a core kernel element in there that Jerry West is berserk like that. I mean, everybody's read the stories where he cannot watch the game. He cannot, he gets so intense during the games that he can't watch them. He can't even watch them on television. He has to listen to them on the radio. I mean, that story of him going down in a car, that was not an exaggeration. He watches games in the dressing room and so forth. Um, you know, what about the stories, though, early on where he had him in a ball in the side office on the house? You know, those, those kind of dramatizations <laughs> in the golf course where he went ballistic. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure that he didn't do it as many times as that, but you know, I hey, everybody's done stuff ballistic like that. I mean, I've done stuff like that before. I, you know, I threw a basketball at a referee in the middle of a in the middle of a of a league game. Um, you know, and and everybody has things that they you know they especially when they're passionate like West is, you know. Uh, things that 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 I'm sure they would think were wrong later, you know, and and we we all were young once, you know. I mean, that's Jerry was young too, you know. I mean, and he going from to LA Lakers from Cabin Creek, that's pretty big jump, man. Pretty big jump indeed. But also here today to talk about the winning time controversy and a man who was very happy to hear that a certain coach in Villanova was retiring or reported by Sham Sharania that Jay Wright is going to be retiring from Villanova. Could the Lakers be next? We'll find out, but right here today to talk about right now and that and the winning time controversy. Good man indeed. It is Ox1947, a.k.a. Joe Sorrell, Joe Sorrell5 on Twitter. Good to hear from you, my friend. Your thoughts, Jay Wright, winning time. You've been all over the place on, on winning time with me on it. Like, like I have early on, you were loving it. Now it's like, okay, they're just jumping the shark entirely. And Jay Wright, you never know. Next stop, LA Lakers. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why an 83 year old Jerry West gives two craps about what some shows doing about him. I think it adds to the fact that maybe he is closer to that character than not. To actually demand an apology, what is that going to do? Or retraction? Retraction of what? How? How are they going to retract the show? Doesn't doesn't make any sense. Uh, I hope it's not a financial thing. Uh, my cynicism says that that's where a lot of that emotion comes from. Um, mm. I'm not trying to dog on Jerry. I love Jerry. Jerry's Mr. Laker. Will always be Mr. Laker. The logo. But but this this needs to. I, I just I, I had made a comment earlier today on Lakers ball. It's 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 an it's a constant just whining in every facet of society these days. To me, I'm questioning 
why do you give two craps what a bunch of yahoos who are watching the show think about you? Why? What's the what difference does it make? Okay, so you're in a ball, you're in your you're in your underwear in a ball in, in the show. Okay, what's gonna happen? You, everybody's gonna go by your house now, throw toilet paper at you, and say, "Ha ah, ha, you 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 cry." <laughs> I mean, what 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 exactly what exactly is that going to do? I, I don't understand. I can understand why Magic didn't want to watch because I'm sure he got wind of the fact that his exploits were going to be exploited. And he didn't want to watch that, but he didn't go out and get a lawyer and cry about some kind of retraction. It's over. It's too late. And by the way, we know that's who he is. He just didn't do it outwardly. And when it comes to entertainment, we can't, th this show doesn't have a $50 million budget. Okay. They got to make way of what they're doing uh, with what they have, I should say. So they're, they're producing something that's outward. When we know inward, it's true. Jerry West, I heard this back when Jim Rome said it when I first got to Southern California. He said it in 1996. Jerry thinks every game's a game seven. I remember that like it was yesterday. So him sitting in that car, listening to the radio and being a nutcase, maybe not outwardly because Gary Vitti had confirmed that he was more – depressed he's more inward yes that that i believe it's true because we've heard it but you cannot translate that to film tv you need some entertainment the the the, the easiest thing to do would it have been let's say when they did the money ball they had interviewed art howe on philip C C seymour hoffman's portrayal of him and he said it was i didn't do that I didn't talk about my contract on that last year. And he went through some things, and it's on record. Again, it's 2022, guys. This thing is all over the place. People know if they want to go find it. And just explain that's not – none of that was true. It was all entertainment. And then go about yourself. You know, who cares? The show – the only negative with the show this last couple of times was I thought they embellished where they didn't have to. And I think we talked about this last week. Yeah, they didn't have to lie on the scores. They didn't have to have Michael Cooper hit the game-winning shot. I'm watching with my – I mean, I, I remember sports statistics and games, even though I didn't watch them or I was too young, just from history, from, from watching them from history. But I'm like, what the – Michael Cooper – Lakers beat the crap out of the Celtics of that year in, in, two, in both games. I don't, yeah. I don't understand what's going on here. Why, why would they do that to create that tension – and they won the games beforehand on the road trip in Indiana and Detroit, as I mentioned. Yeah, it, it, you know, again, they could have – they don't need to do that. Put some – that stuff happened. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it gave them the framework to introduce Bird. It's, in it's hard to build – it's hard to – you know, this is the part where at the beginning of the year all this stuff going on, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, man, these guys are not going to have to worry about anything because they went 16-22. I mean, they were a – they were a, just a great team. All year, winning it all wasn't that much of a surprise. I mean, really, once you started seeing what they were doing, you have the MVP, you have the new blood and Magic Johnson, and then you have everybody else kind of coming in on their own. But I, I, I don't know. I, again, there's there's budgets that have to be considered here. This is still, you know, this is a business, and there's not enough money on an HBO show to create all this realism. And even if it did. I always revert back to the same analogy I use all the time when it comes to real and Hollywood. Okay. White Earp versus Tombstone. What's the most popular? It's not even close. Exactly. Tombstone. So everyone says they want authenticity. Everyone says they want their stars to be just like them. It's BS. We don't want Brad Pitt and George Clooney and... Leonardo DiCaprio to be just like us. Otherwise, what's the point? And we don't want the real life Wyatt Earp and what happened in his real life. We want Kurt Russell's Wyatt Earp. And then just like in this show, we want to see Jerry West being a psycho. I do. I know it's not true, but it's fun to watch. So relax. Life is too short, especially for Jerry West. You're 83, Jerry. Who cares? 
You're going to check out at least in another decade. You think anybody's going to really care? No one cares. Let it go. Enjoy the show. I'm enjoying it. And that's that's the button I have on it. Just don't ask me to be your Huckleberry. That's all I say, okay? Well, that, yes. that, that ends in a bad way for you if I said that to you. Yes. Yeah, I would be Michael Bean and you would be Val Kilmer. By the way, uh, just, I have a bullet between just, my just, just, to, just to point something out to you, I did a film, what was it, uh, about 11 years ago. Um, the director wanted me to do a TV. They were going to do a pilot for a TV show called uh, Guns of the West. Mm-hmm. And I had done the pilot. And unfortunately, didn't go forward. But um, the star that he had, I wore it, and I didn't know what they gave him. Like, they're like, hey, this is this is the star from Tombstone, and I couldn't believe it. I was wearing all black, I had the cowboy hat on, boots, the whole thing. So it was a it was a surreal oh, moment a, in my I life. Got a shot of that. It was yeah, I do. I have a shot. I'll, I'll send it to you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I might have you show it on the show if you want next Sounds week or whatever but it was a it was a surreal moment um i had a henry rifle on me you'll see it i'll, I'll show it to you guys awesome. um and it was uh again that that's the hollywood side guys this is this is this is what we want to see we want to be entertained it's not about a message a lot of times it's about entertainment and i think that's why a lot of these films and tv shows have it's it, very few and far between that that are that, that are good because of this constant whining and crying and just non nonsense of something that's fake. It's fake. They have a whole paragraph of it at the beginning of the show, at the end of the show. Relax. Disclaimer. This you yeah, know, disclaimer. You mentioned the money aspect about it, Joe, and that's interesting because even though this wasn't a documentary. The Jordan documentary, there was a great deal of turmoil around that. And and it was because some of the players, none of the players got paid. And a lot of the guys were really angry that they didn't get paid. They didn't get a cut of everything from all of the publicity that happened on the on on the last dance and, and everything associated with it. Um and I guess there was a couple of people who did get paid because they had extensive appearances in the show or something or another. But um, winning time might have might have at least you know I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the strategy is of of going out there. I mean, obviously, criticism probably any publicity is good for them, good publicity or bad publicity. In, oh, in yeah. The, yeah, in but, the but it might have been nice. It might have been nice if they had gone to each of the people in the you know who are involved in in the in the show that they were protagonist main major protagonists in the show and say you know. Hey guys, you know we're gonna have a little fun. You know, let's let's you know maybe they can have a roast ahead of time, so that these guys they would have run into a problem. They would have run into people being upset. It is yeah. They probably actually wanted to have them be upset so that that would add to the add to the constant attacks on the show. You know, I mean it's there are gonna be people logging into the show to see what happens. Yeah, just because of. And, uh... and I'm going to say the, the show is it been universally praised. Uh, again, yeah. when you go to Variety, they're already are on the awards front. They're already talking about the Emmys. The two categories as of now, and they're, keep, they're going to keep on updating it throughout until the actual Emmy nominations arrive. But the only ones as of this recording that are up that they have odds on as far as the favorites mm-hmm. are in the drama series and the best actor in a drama series and limited series category. And right now the best drama series in the top 10 right now that they have favorite that they think, uh, and again, they're not perfect on it. You've they read, you've read, you've read the book. Showtime. Showtime, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. Where's it end? Where Where's does the end, end of the book? Bob's the book end. Well, the, the book ends again. It's just, it covers the, the season. And then as far we, as we've been the championship, right? Yeah. And then it extends. So how beyond this is gonna end? Yeah. Well, no, it stands beyond that as far as the Showtime, because it covers the Showtime era. It covers all the four years it, you think we're well, going to yeah. cover all the yeah, way Yeah, it, cover, it covers the good and the bad. It could, the, obviously, the firing of... Ending of, with um, magic. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and it, it covers, it extends on to that. But let me just say this, with Variety, again, they're they're pretty good on gauging as far as the award's mm-hmm. concerned. They they did a pretty good job covering as far as and, and forecasting what the Academy Awards did. Right now, again... 
they have winning time in the top 10 right now as far as candidates that could actually be named as far as best drama series. And John C. Riley's performance so far seems to be one of the top 10 performances in a dramatization for a lead actor that's being considered. So that it, the show is well thought of. Despite what I say, despite what you say, despite what Joe says, it's still being thought of as a very good show. It's already been approved for season two. Obviously, it's going to keep on evolving as far as the overall decade and what, you know, I mean, you could go, you've got so much How fodder. How many episodes are they going to be in the first season? Do we know that I yet? think it's 10, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you have to look at it. I'll look at IMDb. And we're on like seven. We've got seven now. Yeah, we've got seven. But I'll, I'll confirm that. So then they can't be, since this is winning time, it would seem like the logical, I mean, I'm thinking about the way that most of these TV series are doing with authors like Reachers, one book basically is one season. Yeah. So one NBA season may well be one season in winning time. They may just do the first season because now they've got a second season to go. What are they going to do? Doing the second season is probably the logical story for. Yeah, it's 10 episodes, by the way, the first season. So, yeah, yeah I mean, they could go the way Showtime is could well, have you've nine, already seen the nine ending. years. You could have. You could have nine, you could have eight championships between the Lakers and the Celtics. Well, in the very first scene of the actual series, you see the end of where it's go. Hollywood does this a lot with shows, and Joe will tell you this as well. They always, you know, not always, but sometimes they will start a show series where they want to end up. Yeah. And they show the scene where, where Magic was crying, not Magic's agent was crying in the car because Magic had just announced to the world he had AIDS. So I'm I'm thinking that's where they're going to end the series at, as far as that part of it. If they ever evolve into a that part uh, to the how to do figure what they do in the second year of them. Well, no, it's they're going to evolve as far as to the '80s and whatnot. But as far as because they can't go much farther as far as in three episodes, they can't go and cover the rest of the entire. Well, decade. I don't think in three episodes they can get to, to magic. Having no, no. So they obviously have I mean, an magic end goal. Is still a young man, then. He's so got, they obviously have an end yeah. goal in mind as far as several yeah. seasons for this. So they didn't show that. I, I missed that. I, I guess. Yeah, I it's the first. It. It's the first. The very beginning. Yeah, first episode, first scene. Okay. It's right there. You. So that's you a long term. A long term end for the show. Huh? Yeah, that's the long term goal for the show. And then they could evolve into a second series, obviously covering the Three Ring Circus book that right. he just put out, which is an amazing book. I like that one better. I think that one was really great covering the Kobe Shack and Phil era by Jeff Perlman, a, a guy who the the show. followed all the way through Magic's illness. Um, I, that I don't, I don't remember on that. I've just because I've it's been been a while since I remember. But I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let me. I have to go ahead and, and let me know. I got it back somewhere. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll recheck it out. Yeah, I've so, been watching. I just been watching lots of new series and figuring out how they're how they're tying them to it, and and it really does appear a book of series, basically. Yeah, it looks like it's set up for several seasons, simply because of the fact that again, the last, yeah, it's going to end up with the well, ending Showtime of the show. Lasted, Showtime lasted almost a decade, so they, yeah. could, you know. Uh, I don't think they'll go that far. But five, I could see five, six seasons out of it. I think Joe can as well, as far as that's concerned. But the thing I wanted to go ahead, we lost to the Celtics. I don't want to see those again. Well, you again. That's part (laughs) of it, though. It creates the inner turmoil that I think creates the drama. Well, but you can combine them as a first half of 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 one of the championship years. Yeah, or like next, the the next year where Magic gets hurt. And then right. they lose to Houston is what happens after they win the nineteen eighty championship. Right. So, so that's just the that's the introduction to the second. And half. then Paul Westhead gets fired, and then right. it goes from there with Pat Riley and Showtime is created, et cetera, et cetera. But I wanted to go ahead and finish this thought on this thought before we go ahead and go on to the next subject. And that is, you know, right now you're seeing it with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard in their defamation suit right now that he has for her because she put something, a op-ed in the, I think it was the New York Post or New York Times in regards to him uh, as far, well, he did, she referred to a lot of things, but didn't refer to him by name, but he, you know, they were married or, and they had a, a strained relationship at that time. So they, you know, he alleges that that hurt him, that op-ed, as far as is concerned of what, what, you know, she was accusing of somebody in there that she didn't specifically name, but you know, it was, it was, it was believed to be Johnny Depp and all that. So that's why he's suing her for 50 million or whatnot. The thing is, 
I don't think that Jerry West can go ahead, and I'm not an expert on it, obviously. I don't think that Jerry West can go ahead and sue successfully because they could just loop it at Adam no McKay. Involved. Satire. That's all you have There's to do no is satire. Involved, you know, yeah. Not. You're putting it under satire. Once you put it under a satire, it's really hard to go ahead and, and say it's malicious and it has malicious intent. So, Joe, I mean, you're obviously more familiar with the Hollywood scene. Uh, I mean, I, my stuff is on the back end when I was in Hollywood. You're on the front end when it comes, comes to Hollywood. I mean, you would have to categorize this, I think, under satire. You can't do it as a documentary. It's now more into the satire category. Satire is correct, if you want to go technical. Yeah, so it would be, be hard to go ahead so, and file, uh, file litigation. Is this, is this a money? Is he, is he going to be satisfied if he gets uh, money compensation? Is, is is that is is that where the ethics stop? Well, uh, they're knows? not going to get anything unless he goes to court and gets a settlement. Retra yeah. The retraction is the is the weird thing. Like, what are you? They've, what are you retracting? What are you retracting? It's too late. Right. Yeah. It's already out of the box. That you were a crazy maniac. At, you know. You're 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 proving it, that 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 mentality is. It looks more legitimate when you do this. Right. I don't I don't understand why, but. The, the Hollywood thing, you know, the term Hollywood, it's interesting that people still use that term. It's 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 kind of like words that we use in politics and society and just in general that actually don't actually mean that what they what they used. They don't mean what they mean now like they used to. Uh, Hollywood's really been dead for 40, almost 50 years now in terms of it's what it used to be. It's a corporation. It's a corporation run by corporations and behind, you know, uh, private investors. Yeah. That's that's really what it is. It's not, you know, the Xanax aren't, you know, paying actors a five year contract and having them work for only Columbia Pictures or Universal. They don't do that anymore. That that that, yeah. that was Hollywood. Uh, I so remember term, this yeah, and 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 who's who is who are the movie stars these days? What are the movies? Who is the movie star? Is it Brad Pitt still? Is it Leonardo DiCaprio? Are they still considered movie stars? Maybe Leo to a degree because you see guys like Idris Alba and, and, and hey, Brad Pitt and a lot of people Ryan, doing commercials. Ryan Reynolds, the, Ro the Rock. I mean, those names that would have never been doing stuff for streaming or television or whatnot. They're doing stuff all over the place. They're throwing their names out there, whether it's them or the production companies. Like you said, with Ryan Reynolds, he now owns Mint Mobile and is able to go ahead and uh, pitch that on a regular basis. So, yeah. It, the being whole a, being a pitch man is one thing, but the other thing is in terms of Hollywood, we don't have the elegance anymore. There's no longer the, oh, the new... You know the new the you know the new movie with The Rock or the new movie with DiCaprio. It, like you don't have that essence anymore. It's more of just well, COVID. COVID pretty much put the. It, 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 it not as many stars that could push a movie that yeah, can front a movie. There's so much resentment. Building. There's so much resentment, and even our old movie stars have pissed off. An audience, Arnold being one of them. Arnold was the more biggest... money playing tele. They make more money now with television and streaming. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Although, unless you're yeah. Netflix, which just lost a ton of money, but we yeah, won't go there. On the value in one day. That's... Yeah. Well, Netflix, Netflix is 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 trying to cover. The, I think what's going on with Netflix, and this is something that I had been asking for a couple of years now. Me being a businessman, I you know numbers are a daily thing for me. Yes. What I couldn't understand is you've got these budgets like, let's say, The Irishman. I think The Irishman's budget was $120 million. Exactly. And I'm sitting there going, okay, how do you justify a $120 million budget for a film just off subscriptions? Like, how does that work? You're paying – how do you pay the royalties? How do you pay for the music? How do you – like, all that stuff based off of just somebody paying $9.99 a month? I don't know. And then the most recent news was they didn't want to – I think this happened a little bit back in like 2011, from what I read, where 800,000 subscribers to, went off. 
first time uh, over Netflix. first time in over a decade that yeah. they've actually lost to that many subscribers. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so there, you're, you're sitting there and you're going, okay, uh, okay, what was it this time? Was it really about the fact that they want to spread? They don't want people watching from four different areas with the same subscription. That means they're trying to get more revenue in, right? That makes sense. So either they change the business model or they're going to die, just like their predecessors did with Blockbuster. Well, that's why it, they said they didn't want to do live sports right now is because they're trying to find a way to profitize it to the point where they're satisfied and they won't do it until they can. You're they, competing. Like, you're competing now. Netflix was the head cheese for a while there. But unfortunately, Apple and Amazon are now starting to put in their billions in this and they're not going to run out of money. Apple Those Plus two are not going to run out of money severance on apple plus if you have not watched it yet you will be glad you did i'll just leave it at that but <laughs> uh, cheap luck cheap you luck. Have a subscription that you need to sign up for. well that's true but it's only 4.99 i believe for the subscription on apple plus so for now anyways but with how many with subscriptions netflix, are you gonna have might as well just get cable or satellite man with your netflix though it is 200 <laughs> you still don't get it you still don't get it though because they are keeping that it i spent more content. time i spent i spent more time scrolling netflix than watching but again, it is about HBO Max and HBO and winning time. There's still a lot of controversy there. Obviously, Kareem, like Laker Tom had said, crude stick figures, I think was the comment that he it's put funny on how that. Comes off that as, guy, that guy comes is off as a good guy on the show. How, do you not, how does Kareem not look at that guy and go, wow, he's not doing a bad job? No, I think he, he think I would think he thinks that. I think Solomon is a what is pretty Solomon smart, done? serious, a pretty smart, serious guy who really made an adjustment with Magic Johnson that really was the major adjustment that had to be made for the Lakers to be great. I understand him getting angry about the F off to the kid. He's like, I didn't yeah, say that. That's that I get. That but that's makes the sense. Small stuff again, like you right? Said, you know, but everything else, I'm really sorry, but. He's gotten his mannerisms. He's got everything down with, well, like, you know, with what I've seen. I, when you're as old as when you're as old as I am, and as Jerry West is, and and Kareem is, for Christ's sakes, man, how can you still be happy bothered even by this stuff? Uh, apparently, it's still I, we, does. we've become a society of wussies, guys. It's just it's not. And by the way, there's it's not about you. You can't blame the millennials. I'm telling you right now, it's all that's a fallacy. It, it is a societal thing right now where everything is bothering everyone about anything. I mean, all you got to do is go to a store and just watch how people interact. Everything bothers them. They're just miserable. But so it, 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 it's just become this yeah. angst everywhere. Everyone has angst over nothing, things that are irrelevant. Like, what difference does it make? I remember when I was growing up, I used to hear that word. There were two phrases I heard. What difference does it make? And life isn't fair. Okay, now what? What are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? What's it going to serve? That's what the questions you want to ask yourself. What is it going to serve? When we're watching the Laker game and, and somebody asks me, what, do you have money on the game? I'm like, no, man, it's my team. Well, why do you care so much? I go, because it's fun. Doesn't look like you're having fun. Though, it's fun. Year. It's fun. Here's Not where the year. fun is. I'll explain it. The fun is when we win. Hmm. Yeah, we're miserable every year we don't win a championship. But man, what how does it feel? We for six times in the last 22 years, we watched them win the title. That's But think about it. Think that? about what if you cared so much about the game and the result that you couldn't even watch the game in person or on television. Okay. I'm going to say this. Do, was listen to the game on the no, radio. No, okay, okay, so check this out. And then they having to turn the radio off at times when things got bad. Have you ever dreaded watching the game because you're so nervous? No. I have. I've I've dreaded. Like, the, it's let's say it's Sunday morning. The game starts at 12, right? And it's one of those games where we're down 2-1, and I'm like, dude, we can't lose. We can't lose this game. And I'm dreading yeah, watching it because – and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I'm dreading it. <laughs> I'm dreading watching it because I got to wait first quarter. You know how when you get into that seventh minute in the first quarter and they're up eight and you're like, can the no, fourth quarter I get stopped, here? And I stopped doing that years ago just because 
just because it took the fun out of the game. It took the fun out of the game. When you allow what the game say- to be so important that it causes okay. your life to be great or horrible, what? you've overstepped the bounds of sports and you need to get yourself back under control. Yes. After the game, before the game. I understand that. But what did what did my what what was said about Michael during the last dance that that I love the best out of anything on that documentary, which was he was in the moment, he was in it. So you're in it, you're in it. That game seven against the Celtics in 2010, we were so in it. Okay, yes, there are 20 million children. Kobe, Shaq's dunk from Kobe was my play, man. That was just like the play that. Yeah, no. Yeah, but, it's, but it's at the same it's, time you know, in the moment. You got to let it go when when the yeah. game's over. That's it. Yeah, I'm, spent, not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not decades, beating my wife decades. because they didn't win. <laughs> you know, I'm not putting. I never put my fist in a wall because I was angry. I always thought that was a dumb thing. I will say this though: when Ori hit the the three against this <laughs> against Portland in Game Three of the 2002 first round playoffs, I, this is a funny story. I thought you were talking about Sacramento. No, 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 not that one. Not that one. That one, I I, I, I was in my house, my parents' house, and I, there was nowhere to run, so I, I was like a turtle on on the back, on, on its shell, just doing this and screaming. But the best one was Ori hits the three in 20, 20, 2002, 2002, in Portland. This is when we swept them in the first uh, – for the last time, I guess. Um, and we, we should have lost that game, but Ori hit the shot, right? So I was at the fraternity house, at my fraternity house. They had old stucco ceiling. It's, the building was made in the 60s. So he hit the shot. I ran, jumped in the air. The ceilings in the hallway were short, real short. And I'm six foot three. I hit, I hit the ceiling, right? Still screaming, hit it. Oh, shoot. Oh, ah! everybody going on. What the hell happened? Right? Okay. The best part about this is the day finishes. Okay. I get up the next day, do my normal thing, blah, 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 blah. During the day, I don't know what it was going. I don't know what was going on. I was like, man, my head is itchy. What the hell is going on here? You know, did I put the wrong shampoo? Am I do I need to shower again? I didn't know what the hell was going on. So finally, I'm doing this. I'm doing this after a few times. Finally, I'm like, like this, and all of a sudden, there's blood on my hand. <laughs> and I go, what the hell is going on? So I go in the bathroom, I open up my skull, or I, my head, and it's scabbed. I didn't feel anything for a whole day. And this thing was bleeding. <laughs> and I didn't know it until I scratched the scab, and then I'm sitting there like my hand is all blood, and I'm going, holy crap, I just spent a whole day Bleeding, and I didn't even know about it. So that moment, that fandom, that's that's the extreme, right? That's the extreme. <laughs> but that's what you don't want to repeat. Okay, look, I, I I don't regret it. I'm not regretting it happened. It makes me feel good when my teams win. It's about pride. It's about competition. I can't play ball anymore. So my extension has become the Steelers, the Lakers, and the Dodgers. They are my extension to competition. I want to live through that. And I'm invested in it. And I enjoy it. And part of the excitement and, 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 and the euphoria is having to deal with the bad so that you can get to the good. And that's 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 what it is. I don't again, if they lose in the finals, they lose in the playoffs, they don't make the playoffs, whatever, it's just it's 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 devastating to me but failure. it's 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 within that time i don't you know i still go to work i still am productive i still it is a season of failure if you don't win a championship yes in my book especially if you have a lebron james and an ad and you've already won yes hmm. yes i don't know i think we have to enjoy i think we have to learn to enjoy you know it's it's some of the you can't appreciate the great seasons without having gone through the horrible seasons. This season will make us appreciate the next championship even more. I hope so. Well, I'm just worried. I'm worried. I'm now worried that you said take it. it take it from somebody it. who's lived longer than the two of you combined. I just can't. We can't have the self That is something that you need to learn about life. No, I, I, no, no. 
I'm sorry. Are you 99? No. Yeah. But... Then you are not older than both of us combined. Yeah, because most of your years were very young years, and I only had I'm one 52. Set of years. So you only get, you know, it's not your years when you're cohesive. We all age. 21 and up, you we know. We all age. Yeah, but it's but you your choice on young. whether you want to you're eat. Still too young you. to understand. You're still too young to understand that, that you know. I know, game, I know people my age who live like geezers, and they've been living like that for 10 years, at least 10 years. Well, I will it's say. It's a mindset. You don't live like that, Tom. I don't see it. You, no, you still got fire there. I know guys no, I know that are my age that are dead. Mean. Dead. I and I love them. I love them. They're my friends. But they're dead. They have no yeah. intestinal fortitude, testicular fortitude. They they go to work. They gotta listen to their wife talk about stuff, and then they go they go to sleep, and they do do it all over again. No no like outside stuff. To me, that's the part that I always say. Getting old, I go getting old. What does getting old mean? Does it mean not being able to jump ten feet to dunk? Yeah, okay, I'll buy that. But here, here. This is this is the part in my in my opinion that matters, and I, I'm not saying go buy a Harley and and wear Birkenstocks with socks on. I'm not I'm not talking about midlife crisis stuff. I'm talking about being advancing, progressing, always having next level stuff instead of being redundant and boring and the same thing and having to go by rules. Societal rules or whatever rules for what? For who? I'm married. I got kids. I don't live like a schlep. So let's do that. Enjoy your life, man. Enjoy the games. Enjoy the wins. And if they lose, you're going to have to take the beating too. You know how many things I've read? But, you know, we're Laker fans, man. And this is what we're used to that. I mean, no, people, no, are no, the beating, like the, the, people are talking about the Lakers like they're the Sixers and, and what was it? The. Uh, we, 73, when was it? They only won nine games. What year was it? I forgot. I mean, yeah, but on. we're just fans. We aren't the guys who lost 80, 70 games that year or whatever it was. We're just fans. We can be obsessed with the team and so forth. We can name our kids after them. We can name our cats after them, our dogs after them. I mean, how many Kobe dogs well, are there the right was in the world? <laughs> but the simple truth is that there's a point there's a point with fandom where people take the fun out of it and i, I that really rankles me when they do that it, it should not affect it is a you. game it is a game man i mean i love the game of basketball i played the game since i was a little kid it's what i when i moved to california i hardly really played basketball at all it's all football and bat, football and baseball back in the midwest but yeah you watch it, the game become such an inherent part of your life. All of my best friends came from my basketball experiences. Everything that ground me as a person, you know, through high school and college and everything came from, came from sports and basically from basketball and all of my fandom through the years. And there were probably 20 years where, man, if the Lakers had a bad year, it was a bad, it was a bad year around Tom. I'll tell you that, you know, especially if you, but you know, Christ, I, I mean, I'm a Yankee fan, a Laker fan, and a 49er fan. So I don't have much to complain about as far as being a fan. I, through my life, I've had championships, so many of them I can't even count the total that I that I've watched and I've seen every Laker championship in Los Angeles, I've seen every 49er championship. I haven't seen every Yankee championship, but I've seen a lot of them since 1957 on. So, you know, I've for me. Why wouldn't I think positive things? It's happened for every one of my sports teams at some point in time, and more than every other sports team. Your, your three, your three teams have forty nine championships. By the way, it's a huge number, man. I mean, and of course, the the ratio is getting less. You know, I mean, we can we can say the Celtics have, haven't won in a long time, but our record hadn't been so hot for the last twenty years either. You know, and uh, same thing with the Yankees. You know, and and it, what what burns me is that. Two of the biggest franchises values are the Yankees and the Lakers, and they aren't spending money the way they should be spending money to maintain that elite status that they have as the most winning franchises in their sports. 
I think it's different in the NBA. There's only so few talent. There's only so few well, difference but, makers. I know, but when you they're when the you fourth, you're, they have the fourth saving highest, money by by not signing Alex. Caruso? No one, no, they have the fourth highest salary in the league. There's no way that that's that you can you can say that they're not spending money. They're spending money. The no, problem but, was they put the wrong. They they put they, they allocated said, their funds incorrectly. Yes, they allocated their funds on one guy, no. and it was a. A, a, a giant mistake. Not only that, yeah, but, but they could have they could have made other moves that could have helped, but they didn't. You know, they they could have signed they could have signed Dennis Schroeder, so they could have traded him. So look, they tried to sign him. He didn't. He said no. See, that's the part that that's not mm-hmm. fair. At that point, they tried well, to sign him. The yeah, issue is, it that. comes down to the same issue. Okay. Well, they got the West, problem Westbrook. Is that that we have a general manager who made all of the right moves. The very first year when we went in a bubble and he made all of the wrong moves the next two years. So now what are the odds that he's going to make the right moves? I, I think the odds are, for example, every time I look at one of the options that the Lakers have for Russell Westbrook or, or a trade to rebuild the franchise and so forth, it really comes down to that. I, for me, it has to be a, it has to be either the, the Pacers or the Hornets, a big trade two or three players from them, because those are the simple trades that, you know, if they'll happen just because of the financial numbers are perfect for the two teams. If you get into something like you're going to OKC, which is what Eric Pink has said is the most likely trade where you're basically just getting, you're getting a player that you don't even want in, you know, in favors uh, and you're getting a 34,000, you're getting a $34 million trade exception that you can bring in guys without putting out anything. Um, and that's what you're getting. Why would from OKC them. do that? They are, they're under the cap, and this mm. is a trade that would happen before July 30, before June mm. 30th, because it has to be this year because they have a huge extension coming in for uh, for uh, one of their their point guard next year. So from that trade, it requires it's a trade that could end up because you would get you'd be you'd be under the cap so that you. Are could, you talking about SGA? Because SGA is already yeah. signed. Well, it starts next year. It starts next year. Yeah, it starts. So they could still, they're still under the cap by that much this year until July 1st. So they could make a trade before June 30th to take on salary and without any penalty. And that does just finish the uh, HBO winning time conversation with this. Again, check out Jeff Perlman's book. It does cover the decade of showtime and it ends with the 1991 basically what the parameters are magic announcing aids which essentially after the finals with michael jordan that they ended up losing might as well say that was the end of showtime right there and then so basically that book covers that also that period of shows they can't cram cram that into three three no it'll be like five six seasons something like that that's usually if they have if it if it continues the the ways of people watching it it will continue on for about five, six Jerry seasons. Westall. well uh, that again is going to be up for debate so we'll see what well, happens the, the, the new the the segue from showtime and who led showtime to current today events yes unfortunately there's no noise of anything other than Jay Wright, which was my choice to be the next Laker coach. And that's something of, I want to ask you. But he's going, reportedly he, retiring. He, he, he's reportedly retiring due to, again, it's a rumor that he's burnt out. He's 60 years old. I guess this stuff has been festering for a while. Um, unfortunately, it's the, portal. it's the portal, man. The portal puts such pressure on the coaches now. I love the portal. I'm sorry. I love the portal. It's like college free agency. I mean, and and the kids are getting offers for like three hundred thousand dollars to come play for us. With the NIL and transfer portal, I love it for the kids because this is something that these kids have been wanting to earn now and do now and have now in their lives for decades, and now they have it. I'm sorry. I'm rooting. I'm side for the kids on this one. Sorry. Couldn't care less either way. Uh Um. But they, you don't think Jay Wright? Well, you don't. Then in I want Jay Wright. I want a Jay Wright. Jay Wright ran. Jay Wright. I'll tell you why I like love Jay Wright. Okay, I'm a professional watcher. I don't really like amateur sports. I mean, I like watching Matt March Madness, and on occasion the women's college basketball or uh, college football. But there's 
I'm, I'm, I'm tied to pros. I like, I like professional sports. Jay Wright ran as close, ran as close of a professional type system as anyone. He let his players kind of, he kind of let them dictate what, what was going on, what was happening, what happened. Um, that's what I love. I love a coach that can, if he can do that with kids, imagine what he would do with pros, especially if you've got someone like LeBron and AD. But you're saying Ooh. he's been, you're saying if the reports are true, uh, the reports are, if they are correct, that he could be suffering from burnout and that would be. But then again, we've heard this with Nick Saban. We've heard this with Urban Meyer. Jay Wright isn't in those realm. I don't think is in that category. I think he's a pretty determined guy. But again, you never know. And then he has of course, no connection to the Lakers, though. That's the thing. See, that and I that's think. the thing that bothers me. Is I know, just, but what I know does it make. Yeah, but it's that's who you want. Gonna, that's the guy. Pick somebody before June twenty third, which is the draft. That's the guy. That's but, who but, I want. Why? Again, it goes back to Joe's question on that. You in the previous episode. Why? Why would you? Okay, and that leads us into another topic. Then does that mean the Lakers are going to buy their way or trade their way into this year's draft? Because it doesn't really make sense that they have to get a coach by this year's draft by free agency. Maybe that's a better idea. But well, by the draft, I would say do, they, they, do we have a second round pick even at this draft? No, no? we have nothing. No. We're probably yep. going to buy. We'll probably buy a second rounder, um, and they're and and also too. The other thing is there are a lot of talent that that has come into the league that other teams have gotten and and we've gotten from undrafted players, um, and so we're going to be looking at. We're going to have our scouts looking at everybody in the league, and if we can buy a second rounder that makes sense, we'll buy a second rounder that makes sense, um, and and most likely we'll be looking at at guys that we could that we could possibly bring into camp and, and either put into our development program with uh, South Bay. But uh, obviously they, you know, listen, the last thing they want to do is to really go out there and start making deals the first week of July without a cat, without knowing who the coach is so that the coach can be, have some input into the process. So the goal, even though they haven't given themselves deadline is June 23rd, which is the draft so that they could be organized and, and, and just get it out of the way by June 23rd, for Christ's sakes, because you don't want to be doing that in in July while you're actually bringing players in, because that's the biggest handicap. It's not the knowledge of that having them involved in the deal. It's other teams, other players not knowing who is the coach okay. and, and who's going to be their coach. That's a major thing, especially for guys that, that we're looking to sign for for uh, either an MLE player or, or a BAE if we decided that we were going to be under the cap, that we were going to hard cap ourselves. So there's a lot of things that are real important to, to have stability of a coach having decided by the time you hit free agency on July 1st. All right. But before we head on out, great thoughts right there from Laker Tom and also as well Joe Sorrell. If you have any questions for us on the show, Please go ahead, drop it on YouTube, Facebook. You can go ahead at Laker Tom, at Joe Sorrell 5, at Lakers Fast Break, Lakers Fast Break at Yahoo.com. Drop it in one of the topic, uh, topic comments right there for you at Lakersball.com or be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. But before we head on out, quick update on the playoffs. I've been watching it. I know Joe has. I think Laker Tom has probably checked in once or twice as well. Right now, we have the Heat leading two to nothing already over the Hawks. Been looking what I say, maybe at best the Hawks get a game out of it. So maybe I think about five games at best. The one that I think a lot of people are surprised on because we had picked the Raptors. I think exclusively all of us. I don't think any of us picked the Sixers. Or did you, did Joe? Did you pick the Sixers or you picked the Raptors? No Sixers. Okay, so then Sixers, you're looking Celtics, uh, Heat, and uh, Bucks. Okay, well, you're looking good so far when it comes to the Sixers because they're up 3-0 with an impressive victory on the road in Toronto. So they are really looking uh, – things are looking bleak, I should say, for the Raptors as they're ready to go ahead and go fishing on their own. The Bucks – May free Nick Nurse up for the Lakers. Yeah, well, may it may indeed. Well, but but may, with uh, – The team doesn't look, like, doesn't look as hot as they, as they look going into the playoffs. Well, the Bulls they're though, missing they're missing one star. They just need one star and they're back. They're back the in Bull, it. 
The Bulls, though, are mm-hmm. really – they've really surprised today because they did pull off the close victory over the Bucks. So now that series is tied one out, one all as the series heads towards Chicago. I didn't think that Chicago had enough to go ahead and compete on the same level that Milwaukee was because I know Milwaukee was thought of as a heavy favorite to go all the way in the NBA playoffs. So we'll see what happens there. Any thoughts on Chicago tying it up, Joe? I don't, I don't, I, I, I love, I love their team. I like Billy Donovan. I think he's extremely underrated. I just, I don't know. I, I think, I think in the end, Bucks will take it, but but Bulls have enough tenacity and defense to, to make it a series. And then last but not least, covering the Eastern Conference, the Celtics are up two games to nothing with the Brooklyn Nets, probably kicking themselves in the head as they go back to Brooklyn. They could have had game one. Not a surprise. And they led it by 10 at the half in game two, and they have only themselves to blame. That means nothing. Couldn't couldn't execute down the stretch. 10 points is two points in this era. I know, I know. And it certainly was the case for, for Boston as they pulled away without any problems in the fourth quarter. And made things look really easy for themselves. But, yeah, they, they go back up to nothing to Brooklyn. Brooklyn, like again, they just they couldn't get it done on the defensive end when they needed to. So there's going to be some problems there, with, you know, if they don't even make it out of the first round. I know with all those vaunted stars on that team. So we'll see what happens there. But in the Western Conference, I think the big surprise is that Phoenix, not only did they split – because they lost last night against New Orleans in Phoenix, the heavily favored Phoenix Suns. They lost their star, Devin Booker, for at least two games with a hamstring injury. Laker Tom, you know, when you saw that, I mean, because he was 31 points in the first half. He was amazing that first half. You knew it was like something where it's like, okay, things are just going too well for Phoenix right now. Yeah. They, um, They've had almost a blessed season, so it would be it would be terrible luck for this to really cost them. And and they're actually probably fortunate that it happened when it happened because um, they they should be able to still beat the Pelicans. Oh yeah, I don't think I think yeah, they no, should. I, still I don't think they're. I don't think that that it puts a series at risk. Um, they just need. To however, split. however, hamstrings, man. Anybody who's had a hamstring before knows how tricky they are because. Talk to James Harden. Yeah, Jesus, they just do not – you just don't know when they're when they're really fixed and they can happen. They can get re-injured so easily, man. Yeah. And it and it's it's that exertion. It's that extra effort that always gets you when you do it. And they're, you're prone for having it happen when you're tired. It's just one of those horrible situations that, that it's hard to predict when the guy will really come back and be able to play at his lip and, and Harden look like a shell of himself tonight. Absolutely. But, you know, they were still able to get it done. And that's the thing. Philadelphia's up 3 nothing, And outside of some good passing, Harden has really been struggling out there. Not able not able to get by on anyone. And just really, yeah, just really not looking good at all. Joe, before we head on out, your thoughts on the new death lineup with Jordan Poole, now part of this equation on the Warriors. And because of the limitations on minutes Steph Curry's had to come off the bench and he's been amazing they've looked amazing the first two games what are your thoughts on the Warriors going out maybe going ahead and winning maybe one or two more on the road in Denver just you know going ahead and ending this early Denver's uh they're 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 lifeless other than they seem overwhelmed yeah they're you know it goes back to what I was saying last week where Everyone was sitting there, oh, the Nuggets are going to be the next up-and-coming team and this and that. It takes a, a certain mindset to handle the grind year in and year out. And in a short two-year span, they're just a six seed. You know, and I know Jamal Murray's not really there. You know, Michael Porter Jr. Michael Porter Jr. But eh, they 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 made their run with really without him a couple of years back when when they were in the bubble. But that's the thing is you you heard how they were going to be the next big thing. But I uh, I don't know. Jokic is nice, uh, but you know in, in a stat heavy era, 
I'm not really as impressed with with those things anymore. It's and then again, not having your guys there is just stuck. You, you can't can't be great if you don't have them. One of your big two. Um, you're you're gonna play Golden State. Golden State plays really well when they don't have any pressure on them. They play real well. That's why good shooting good shooting is always good when it's there's not a lot of pressure. So now pool is the greatest thing since sliced bread. It is the way we are in, in today's society. The guy has a good week. All of a sudden, he's the greatest shooter. He's the next Splash Brother. He's the next this. He's next that. They got to create something, I guess, to keep you watching. Well, they, um, if he I, does, if he does continue to play, they're going to be very hard to sell. Well, it's interesting. If he plays that like that. It's interesting how uh, Steph Curry's turned into Manu Ginobili here. If he does that, wow! I, that only adds to the fact that he is a truly a team guy and doesn't care about the the the, the, the usual stuff that stars are supposed to care about. It also sets a good example when uh, when uh, when young when the young guy has to go to the bench when Steph's ready to start. It's just like anything else, right? Anytime the star can eat it like yeah. everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can he complain when it's respect, did. right? Step I don't, I, I don't, it, so. I don't know where this is going to go, guys. I, I was, I was thinking until Booker blew out of, or not blew out, but messed up his hamstring. I, 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 I thought this is Phoenix's year. They're going to win it all this year. They have everything. There's nothing else they need. But again, injuries can dictate that, right? So, if if he's back in three games or you know three games from now and he's back to being who he who he was, uh, I still say Phoenix. Um, however, the CP3, Celtics CP three needs to be healthy too. Yeah, I but the Celtics playing the way they're playing is is scaring me. I, yeah. We we can't have gone through all this stuff with LeBron and all of a sudden get back to being a championship behind them again. That would be just devastating. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree as well, and, I, and it's hard because I really respect that team. It's the first Celtic team I've really respected ever. Yeah, we got two well, or three guys. Let, let's finish up the playoff like wrap up, and then before we head on out, the Grizzlies and Timberwolves. Very interesting series. Very talkative series, as was expected. A lot of mouth action going on there, as far as some jabbering back and forth. Stop jabbering and give Patrick Beverly an elbow to the freaking nose. That's what I want. <laughs> Well, maybe that'll happen when it goes to Minnesota here this weekend and whatnot over the it next two happen. games. Guys are, I think Grizzlies are just going to be too much. Grizzlies that, are that, going to stop them. Yeah, that, the Grizzlies, I think they got a wake-up call in game one. I think they're going to go ahead and, and dominate the rest Back of the Backdoor sweep? Uh, it could yeah. be. could be. John yeah. Moran has looked really good, especially that second game. Yeah. And last but not least, the Jazz, as you see there on the screen, 70% favorites, I guess, uh, still, still win the series over the Mavericks. I disagree because the fact that we could see as early as game three a return of Luka Doncic. Laker Tom, before we head on out, I'll also get your thoughts as well, Joe. Your thoughts on this series because, again, we could be seeing Luka as early as the next game. game Ooh. I, uh, still, I still say Utah. I think Utah was going to win it in seven, but – I wouldn't be surprised if they got upset because the team still they're at the end of the rope. You know, they're going to get, they're going to, Quinn's gone. Quinn's gone. Probably, probably uh, Rudy's gone. Um, you know, they've got new ownership. Uh, they got a new general manager who we know is a heavy trader. Um so you know, I expect them to. I expect them to make moves and changes, and I, 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 I think they would be. I'd be surprised if they survived. Well, I'd be surprised. Uh, I'd be. Uh, I'd be very surprised if they survived as well. But I, I think that actually, if Doncic comes back in Game Three, I think that could spell a series win for Dallas and him finally getting to the second round of the NBA playoffs and getting that off of his back, that well, weight, because he's starting to get that that rep that he can't take a team all the way or that he can't even take right. a team far into the playoffs. So once you earn that rep, it's really hard to shake. So if he does come back and game, you got a good three, point guard when he's gone though, man. That, yeah. That Brunson Brunson kid, he's Brunson really, really good. playing well. He's, yep. Yep. There you go. Indeed. But we here at the Lakers fast break, will continue to update what's going on for you in the NBA playoffs. In fact, we'll be back Sunday night to go ahead and give you the lowdown plus more scuttlebutt maybe for 
everyone out there on what's going on with winning time. I'm sure Jerry West will not be happy with it, but we'll see what happens there. And maybe some extra news on the Lakers front. So we'll be glad to provide it for you as well. But once again, it's Joe Sorrell, Ox1947, Joe Sorrell5 on Twitter. Also check him out at LakersBall.com. Laker Tom, check out his latest article today at Lakerholics.com. And for me, at Lakers Fast Break. Plus check out my other show, The Pop Culture Cosmos, each and every week, right wherever you get your podcasts. But thank you so much for watching. Again, big shout out to the awesome YouTube followers out there. We're now over 150 strong, all because of you. You had some great comments. Joe and I are going to continue to monitor them. So we go ahead and share our thoughts with you on that. Love your actions. Love you guys. Just go ahead and, and saying what you're saying out there. We truly appreciate it. But as always, we cannot thank you enough for being part of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. See you Sunday night, everyone.